So Elizabeth, what is the Governor's Institutes of Vermont all about? Well... My name is Ellen McCulloch Lovell, and I'm very pleased and proud to have founded the Governor's Institutes in 1983. With a lot of goodwill and excitement and creativity and help from other people. In 1983, I was the director of the Vermont Arts Council. I'd worked there for 13 years, um, and I was very engaged in arts education, really wanting every Vermont kid to be able to make art and understand art, whatever that form might be. And it was very lacking in the schools. Um, in 1983, Steve Kagan was appointed as the Secretary of Education for the state of Vermont. And I had known Steve through some arts friends in Massachusetts and was eager to get together with him to see what might we do, what kind of partnership could there be between the Arts Council and the Vermont Department of Education. I'll never forget Steve kind of leaning towards me and just saying, Ellen, let's do something for the kids. And what we realized where we were headed was something and more immediate and direct and less having to do with systems in infrastructure, something that would make a difference in kids' lives. And we got very excited about the idea of actually doing something that summer. <laughs> I mean, just like crazy ambitious, let's do something. And I turned to uh, Christine Graham. Well, I'm Christine Graham and I was the individual who developed the program concept for the uh, Governor's Institutes in 1982 and 83, and then I was the executive director for the first six years of the program. I was invited by Ellen Lovell, who was the director of the Vermont Council on the Arts, and Steve Kagan, who was the commissioner of education at the time, uh, to do a little research project and figure out how they could develop a program outside of the schools for students that were interested in the arts and were underserved by the public school system. So my name is Susan Scorbati, and my current position is I'm director of the Center for the Advancement of Public Action at Bennington College. And I was the first director of the first Governor's Institute which is the Governor's Institute on the Arts, and I was the director for the first five years. And I also really kind of collaborated and co-founded the concept with Christine Graham, Ellen Lovell, and Steve Kagan. My name's Steve Kagan, and I'm uh, just past my 80th birthday. And I'm looking back on uh, 40 years ago, I was the State Education Commissioner in Vermont. Ellen and I had had some previous experience in working on arts initiatives. And together, uh, we uh, put together an idea. The idea was to have special opportunities for students, uh, particularly high school students in Vermont, that would transcend the opportunities that they had during the course of their academic year. And we attached the appellation of governor, governor's institutes, because we really wanted these to be special opportunities that would attract uh, school administrators and also to young students for nominating themselves for this opportunity. You know, this was before the internet, so all the research I did was calling other states and finding out what they did and talking to students about what they wanted and contacting schools to find out what kinds of programs they had. And I, with all that research, I developed a proposal for running a summer program for Vermont students in the arts, just the arts at that time. 
And um, I think it must have been like the end of March that I presented the proposal to Steve and Ellen. And they said, this sounds great, let's do it this year. <laughs> and so it was like April, middle of April, that they said, go for it. We'll run the first program um, the beginning of July. And so then, then we had to figure out how are we going to get students and how we're going to let them know about it and where we're going to run these programs and who is going to teach in them. So, um, so we did that. Literally had to get on the phone with all 52 superintendents. It was that intense. And literally they, for the most part, all sent two students. That's how it was set up at that point. And so we, that first summer, it was at Linden State College and we had two sessions, two weeks each, with high school students and middle school students. We put together the proposal. We went to the governor then, Richard Snelling, uh, to see if he would be of, uh, have interest in the idea, and he did. Uh, he was actually quite enthusiastic about it. Uh, and with his strong support, we launched the first institute, uh, but we also had in mind, and Dick Snelling, I think, supported this quite uh, directly, that we would have institutes in other subjects as well. One of which was uh, international affairs, uh, and it wasn't the, uh, held in the first year of the institutes, but after we had the first institute in the arts um, held at Linden State College, we decided to also pursue others. Uh, probably uh, the one on the international affairs was uh, spearheaded in part by the existence of the School of International Affairs in Brattleboro, Vermont. Of course, this all had to be financed. So Secretary Kagan and I were willing to commit money from our agencies, but we knew the model was going to require private money. We always figured Maybe it could be like a third public, a third private, and a third from the school systems or the parents. So we tried to create a financial model that was sustainable from the very beginning. For the private funding, we went to the Wyndham Foundation. And Stephen Morse, who was the president at the time, also completely got it and came up with a substantial enough grant for us to feel like we could go ahead and do this, and we did it. So everything by telephone and letter writing, and I just took over my whole basement with um, all the, because all the students had to put in applications, and we had stacks and stacks of applications, and we went through them all, and we selected kids, and it was wild. One of the things that I think was really exciting that we were given the freedom to do that very first summer was to really invent like the structure and that really was a collaboration with the faculty. It was a really remarkable experience because with the focus on underserved kids, we got kids who really didn't perform well in anything in school at all. They were just, you know, like as we said, sitting behind the barn and uh, drawing and wishing they could do art, but had no resources to do it. There were kids out there who felt really isolated, like they were the only ones. I mean, literally, the boy writing a novel in, you know, under the covers in bed with a flashlight, or the one who thought she or he was the only dancer or the only person who loved to create costumes and be in theater. And so the idea of bringing these kids, identifying them and bringing them together with other artists um, really caught our imaginations and we, we knew it would really do something for the kids. I was very much a believer in the John Dewey learn by doing approach. And that's what, that's what we built the whole program on. And we had working artists as the faculty. My name is Donnie Osman. I came to Vermont and, and worked in theater for most of my life as a theater performer. Um, I have been associated with a number of theater companies and other disreputable things. 
students need to study with people who are working in the professions and who uh, understand what it is to be an artist or a scientist or um, a mathematician or whatever they're, they're studying and not to always relate adults just to their high school teachers. You know, not that there's anything wrong with being a high school teacher, but that um, that doesn't give them an awareness of what a career in a specialized field might be. In the very first year of GIA, I came as a visiting artist and performed a show. The second year, I was theater faculty. And I think in the third year, we're trying to remember back, I became the director of the program. It's really important to remember that the institutes were not designed to create new professionals. It wasn't about, you know, you're gonna be a professional artist or jazz musician, you know, or theater person. But it was about acknowledging their creativity and um, giving them some skills and developing those skills, however they might want to use them in life. One of the things that I love about theater, which is also true of a project like the Governor's Institute on the Arts, is I love the collaborative process where a number of people come together focused on getting one thing done, you know, in terms of GIA, providing a really rich, deep, meaningful experience for the students that come each year. That actually is pretty unusual that you have a program that makes sure that a student is like going through, they know there's something for themselves, they know they're gonna find a smaller group to really relate to, and they know they're gonna have to connect to a, like a larger community and it's very intentional. And so I think to me that because that was developed at that very first year, I think that that was something about education. And when I think about Dewey, you know, I think about literally like progressive education and, you know, democracy. This is really was a realization of the people who really thought about education and how powerful it can be. And so to me, that's exciting and that you could see it happen within a week or two weeks. GIA was really a magical experience. I think, not, I think it's a magical experience quite often for the students. And I think it's the same for everybody who's involved, for all the faculty. It was really like being a part of a family. It was also never supposed to be more summer, kind of camp activity for kids who have those opportunities. It was for the kids who don't have the opportunities. That's the other really moving thing to me about the institutes that I dearly hope um, the institutes hold on to as a value. Finding those kids who wouldn't have the opportunity. It's not about, you know, you're the most talented. It's about, you know, you're the one with the desire and the creative spirit and the curiosity and, and, and the, the, the need to express yourself in all these different disciplines. The experience of a lot of the kids who came to the Arts Institute, and I assume who still come, they were kids who in many ways didn't fit into where they were. The misfits, often, not all the time, Building a community of acceptance, and again, in real ways, not in, not in just, not, not just mouthing it, but actually doing it. I think so many kids who come find themselves and find a, a sense of confidence and a path to growth and maturity what could be more important? Probably if you were to test, which you wouldn't want to do, but if you were to test all the students at GIV at the end of that week in a way that really evaluated what they've learned, mm -hmm. it would be off the charts. Yeah. Off the charts. And they would know that. They would know that it was like, even in that one week, 
how much was learned. And I'm talking about in an academic way, right? Not just emotionally mature, maturity wise and all that. It's just that they don't, they don't want to measure it that way. They want to measure it through a standardized test that you would get in public school and, you know, fill in the dots. My experience of everybody at GIA is caring about each individual student. That gets thrown around like a platitude. It was not a platitude. People really cared. Each individual faculty member cared about the students in their classes and the problems that were going on. And we really worked to make people have a valuable deep experience. And the proof is in the pudding. They did have it. And that's why I think the Governor's Institute has survived with all the issues that everything has right now in nonprofits and, you know, much easier to go away now than to stay in general. I think the reason that it's still here is because actually fundamentally it works and it's not dependent on any one person. It's dependent on the ideas around education. And then we began to expand and we did the international affairs after that and science was the third one. And then I was done and the rest of it you probably know. <laughs>
being their quirky selves, right? Love, loving theater and writing and music and dance and visual art. And I got to not only dive deeper into music, which I loved so much, but also got to try things like acrylic painting, which is not my forte, y'all. But um, I had a really good time doing it and I felt like I could try new things. And I felt like I was in this community that um, was so up for anything and it was so much fun. If you're immersed in something that you're enjoying so much with other people who are also enjoying, it allows staying focused on something you care about all day and, and all night. I think in a typical life, all of us are asked to fragment during our days. So the kind of retreat that GIV offers, I think, is significant. One of the things that I loved always when I was at Governor's Institutes and still when I talk to people today is when they say to me, Governor's Institutes changed my life. Governor's Institutes is the reason that I am an oceanographer, a doctor, an engineer, an archaeologist, you know, that, that sort of thing. And people have gone out from GIV and done such fascinating things and such important things and made a real difference in the world. You know, I know there's one student that I, that I know of who went through our engineering institute who discovered some massive bug in, in security that was, you know, going to wipe out the whole world. I'm exaggerating, of course, but you know, to see that name in the newspaper and know that this is somebody who sat with me in the legislature and said, GIV was everything to me. I used to think that I was just weird. Then I realized that I was an engineer is what this kid said to me. And so it's just, it, it was, it, it's so rewarding to have been a part of that. I'm most proud of stabilizing the organization and then growing it and then sort of like tilling the garden just a little bit deeper so that future folks could, could make it even richer. And I think that's what's, what's happening. I am extremely proud in particular of the faculty and staff who I brought on and brought up and Elizabeth is the prime example of somebody who came through, started as a student, climbed up the ladder, and now is the executive director of the whole thing. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of credit for that. Uh, it's a little bit of a funny story. I was waitressing one summer, um, not, I guess during college I was waitressing, and I got a call from Donnie Osman, who um, was the director at the time, longtime director of GIA, and he said, we have this last minute opening for an RA, can you be there like next week? And I was like, yeah, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> I quit my waitressing job. And I like, I was a little hesitant in some ways because I didn't want to sort of um, see behind the curtain and know what happened to like make this incredible experience. Um, but once I did, I was, even more impressed and like I grew so much by being a staff member. Every year that I returned as an RA and then as assistant director of the Arts Institute and then eventually as the director of the Arts Institute, the people, the people who make this engine run are just so amazing and are working so hard and are so thoughtful and caring about these young people. Um, it's hard work. It's a lot of personal growth as a staff member as well as as a student. So. Um, that kept me coming back because um, I kept learning new things about myself and pushing my own boundaries. It's, it's not too much to highlight the trustees, the legislators, the businesses, the foundations, every, every, truly every area in Vermont contributes. And it's, uh, I think it's remarkable in that way we value it, we know the value of it. Our students and alums know the value of it. So we have more than 12,000 alumni who've gone through these institutes over the last 40 years. It's such an incredible milestone to hit this moment. Um, and we hope to be around for another 40 and beyond. I hope that those alumni feel that GIV was an important spark in their life and that it still lives in them, that the things that they were opened up to and even that brief period of time still feel open or that they can hopefully think back on GIV and reconnect with those feelings. And I'd love to, to hear their stories. You know, if you're watching this and you're an alum, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know 
where your path has taken you. Both my daughters attended one or more institutes. Our older daughter went to the Arts Institute. She started painting as a, a student there. She has painted every single day of her life since her experience at GIA. She runs her own painting business in interiors in central Vermont. She's just had her second art show recently at the Highland Center for the Arts. And our other daughter, our younger daughter, also went to the Arts Institute, then went to Skidmore where she majored in art. She incorporates art into everything she does. She's a teacher, a speech, speech language pathologist and a teacher at Montpelier High School. And what I know from them is when young people get together, even if they don't know one another, eventually the topic will come up and they'll uncover the fact that several went to GIV. Oh, you went to GIV? What year did you go? Well, I went to this institute. Oh, I went to that institute. It goes on. My daughters are in their 40s and that conversation still happens. How cool is that? GIV is the start of the next step. GIV is community. GIV is freely exploratory. GIV. GIV is a world opener. GIV is self-expression. It represents growth, learning, belonging, and community. GIV is super good for your kid. GIV is discovery. GIV is life-changing. GIV is uh, overwhelming, <laughs> I think. Uh, or like a word akin to that. GIV is transformational. GIV is explore. GIV is a place to celebrate your weird. GIV is joyful. GIV is where you come as you are. GIV is a place that changes your life. GIV is the best place to amplify connections and really dig into your interests and um, accelerate anything that you're currently interested in or intrigued by um, and really immerse yourself with students and professionals and like-minded individuals who can really bring those expertise out of you and teach you more and walk away with lifelong friendships and skills. GIV is eye-opening, exciting, and nothing short of an adventure. GIV is inspiration, a web of connection, and the kind of world that I want to build. It's an opportunity. GIV is an opportunity. A wonderful opportunity to learn about yourself and learn about your passions. GIV is inspirational. GIV is community, connection, and creativity. GIV is the best exploration um, way you can find. GIV is explorative. GIV is inspiration. GIV is inspiration in the sense that it brings life and brings air to a very important idea. Uh, it is that which is shown in the faces of the young people who have an experience where there is inspiration. GIV is a launch pad. <laughs> GIV is a place of self-discovery and new beginnings. GIV is creating opportunities, making connections, and discovering yourself and your passion. GIV is impactful and life-changing. The GIV is powerful. So what's GIV? Um, I think it's hard to put into words. We we use words like awesome and life-changing, but it really is. Uh, people that go through GIV, I think they come away with a much stronger sense of who they are and and what's possible. I think they, they come away knowing they can do a lot more than they thought. And uh, that carries them into their future and, and that sense just grows.